Grass, welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with someone I already admire. I don't know him very well, but I admire what he's doing. Keith Field is with Serving Veterans. He's doing this out of the goodness of his heart, and he's got a reason for it. And we should all be aware of this and help our veterans. So thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. And my question is, what is your passion, and how are you living your passion? Oh, my gracious. Good question. I love what veterans do. For me, uh, this country stood in the gap in World War II. My father, who wore, was Royal Air Force, he came to this country with his new bride in 1947 to introduce her to the people who saved England. Yes. And for him, he had such a respect and felt such a debt to this country for standing in the gap and for uh, becoming involved and in a manner of speaking, defending a number of nations, a great number yes, of nations in yes. World War II. That's right. And you, um, you're serving veterans. Tell me what you do exactly, because I know you drive them to appointments and you, uh, you make sure they get clothing. And tell me what you do on a daily basis. Well, it started uh, with a fellow telling me that there are tens of thousands of veterans in this country sitting at home just waiting to die. I had the privilege of meeting uh, the then Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Eric Shinseki, in 2012, and his comment was that the number one issue for veterans was transportation. Hmm. So we had begun in 2004 to reach out to veterans and provide them with the means of getting to their appointments. In other words, removing that issue from the table because they need to get there. And I have transported over a thousand veterans, probably over 4,000 trips oh in the 14 years that I've been doing this. 14 years you've been doing this? Yes, ma'am. Full time? I have, can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah, so it, you're, takes you're... Up your, it takes up your day. We start very early in the morning, uh, making sure that uh, veterans with seven and eight o'clock appointments or with earlier appointments for surgery and then taking them home at the end of the day when they're complete. Now, tell me, uh, I would think that the, the U.S. government were sending people to war. When they come back, they should be taken care of. Why do we need, uh, yeah, I'm assuming you're a nonprofit. That is correct. Why do we need a nonprofit to do this? Shouldn't the government be doing this? And this, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking I, politics here because I don't care who's in power. The mm -hmm. bottom line is we're not helping our veterans. The way we to, should to answer that question, yes, except that the cost of that is extremely expensive and the difficulty of, of orchestrating it and putting it together is, is You mean transportation for veterans? Absolutely. Uh, along with all the other organizations that provide all the other services and uh, Serving Veterans has brought together at least uh, 30 now organizations so that when a veteran traveling with me says I have a need, I know someone who can take care of that need. Home repairs, um, stress relief, PTSD issues, uh, suicide issues, family issues, uh, can't pay my rent issues. All of these things, uh, we've brought people together so that when a veteran has a need, we can meet those needs. Let me ask you this question. I'm sorry yes. to interrupt you. Um, yeah. There are veterans, supposedly veterans in the street, Yes. Ask panhandling. Are they really veterans, or I know you guys must go up to them and say, "We some, can help some you." Some of them are. Some of them are. And, yes, and absolutely. When you, do you offer them help, and well, how do they respond? Because a lot of people are saying, "Well, I want money. I'm going to just put up a sign that I'm a veteran, even though I'm not." <laughs> you know that happens. Oh yeah, but but real veterans get quite angry at that. Yes. Because a, a real veteran who has served this country is more often than not a person who is proud enough to not ask. Right. Which is why all of our organizations came into existence, because the veterans don't ask. So what we've done is we've reached out to them, and we've okay. said to them, this is a, an organization that if you touch any of us, we will help you. Okay. And that's what it's all about. And, and I hope that some are able to watch this and get help. Uh, 20 veterans are committing suicide a day. Is that a, a true statistic? Actually, no, it's not a true statistic. The real numbers are about 36,000 a year. Okay. It's still high. 
it's way too high. Um, the 20 a day are the ones that you can actually say that was a suicide. Wow. The rest of them are the ones who commit suicide or have themselves or get themselves killed in a way that doesn't look like a suicide as a matter of pride for their family or other issues. Why? What's happening? Is it PTSD? Is it loneliness? Is it you? You know what's happening with them. You see them every day. I have true story. I had a veteran come out of the VA hospital, get in my vehicle, and said, "Just get me home. I've got a gun. I can end this." You see, our veterans are feeling left out in the cold. They're feeling like nobody cares. They're feeling like they've done their time and now they're in a situation where you're no longer important or useful. Uh, and that's very sad because these men and women possess tremendous knowledge, tremendous experience, tremendous expertise, tremendous training, and they just feel like they've got nowhere to go with it. Uh, along with that, dealing with uh, the PTSD, and there are many organizations that understand this, but when you've been through a trauma, your mind doesn't always react to things the way it used to before you were in the service or before the trauma. And the people that you live with oftentimes can't deal with those changes. And that just applies a stress to the individual. And how they cope with it is reactive. And that reaction often alienates them. And then they still have the same problem, but now they're alienated. And it's a pathway toward, I'm all alone, I've got no reason to live. How do we fix this? How do we, as a society, as a community, because we can't, I mean, obviously if people are being sent to war and they're coming back here and they're feeling this way, what is needed? What do we give need them to do something, differently? Give them something to do that establishes re-establishes for them their self-worth. Uh, we are putting together a number of projects, some of which are huge in scope, that will take veterans and, and utilize who they are, utilize their very skills, but also provide them with that sense of not being alone, that sense of camaraderie, that sense of being able to be themselves in an environment where they feel safe and they feel wanted, they feel needed, and they feel appreciated. Right. Now, why did you get involved in this? Because you're obviously very passionate about helping veterans. My father told me that we owe the U.S. military as a family, as English people, we owe the U.S. military a debt. So if ever the opportunity presented itself, I was to do it. It wasn't a think about it, it wasn't an ask about it, it was a do it. It was an instruction, it was a command. And when the Vietnam veteran who said to me that there are those veterans, tens of thousands of them sitting at home just waiting to die, he found out also that I custom build motor coaches. And he looked at me and he said, you've got to build one of those for veterans, which we did. And it never got finished. It was put to use before we got it done. But it has uh, been a real blessing, and it has allowed us the opportunity to make a mark, to make a difference. Uh, I look forward to being able to make more differences in more lives. How can people help you do the job that you're doing? The I most mean, difficult. Is it money? Is, yeah, it, the, is it things? The, is it cars? What is it? We have an auto donation program. We have uh, uh, training programs for veterans. All of those, though, require investment. And uh, people are willing to support organizations that are legitimate, that are mm -hmm. above board, that yes. are straight. And that's the hardest thing, is to get to the place where people look at you and they say, this guy's doing what he says he's gonna do. And I'm blessed because I've had people who have met me, who have watched me, who have seen me, and who know that my day starts at 4 o'clock in the morning and ends at 10 o'clock at night 
and it is committed to the men and women who've served this country. So tell me where they can contact you or, or the organization. Um, how can they get in touch so that you, they can help you? We have Facebook page for Serving Veterans. Serving Veterans, okay. And there is a donate button on that page. I okay. have to say that. Okay. Um, they can contact me on my Facebook page. And it's Kit Keith, Keith Field, Field. Okay, yeah. of Serving Veterans. And, uh, the thing that they'll find there is they'll find a little Hardy Davidson logo there and it says something to the effect of uh, the way to get noticed is to be on a bus. Uh, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> when I found that I couldn't. Well Keith Field, uh, I have nothing but admiration for what you're doing and I thank you on behalf of many people who do care about veterans and keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Make sure you donate to Serving Veterans because this is a great organization and it's helping veterans that deserve our respect and our help. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.